I don't know if you heard this before, but like supposedly they say that you can love more than two people, right? I believe that. You know? Yeah. So when it comes to, you know, your love for the nursery and sustainability, but then also for the love of boxing and what that has to go with it, if you had the opportunity to make it big in both of those and complete, you know, your ultimate mission, which one would you pick? Well, that's the... Oh, shit. Shit, huh? Shit is right. Well, look. I sound great. Is this on? Oh, that's live? Yeah. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> that's a myth. Most likely. That's I a myth. Know. I don't know. I don't know. I got bro. bars. I got to do karaoke soon. I've never done karaoke. Sure, out of sight of my bro. house. Sure, but bro. I mean, that's insane. Right. Outside of my... What do you mean? Sure, bro. All right, ready? Count down. Five, mm. four, three, two. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Energy Podcast. I am your host, Brian Landeros. And before we start off, the purpose of this podcast is to provide a platform for my guests so that they're able to tell their stories, share the adversity, share their wins and their life experiences because you never know whose story is going to resonate with someone out there listening and actually push them to start and get going onto what they want to do. And uh, besides that, man, it's time to introduce my guest for the day. And today on the podcast, we have my boy, the boxer, Adrian Gun. Gutierrez, oh, damn. damn. What's it, Gonzalez? Nah, Gutierrez. Gonzalez. Sorry about that, bro. Plays baseball. It's okay. I used yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. It's you Sorry. know the two greats. I got. I could have. I could have been pro. It's like no. Nah, it could have, but what happened? I uh, just changed careers. Changed careers. Yeah. Okay. Shit. My bad. No, it's right, like so I sucked at baseball. I, I gotta jump into it, bro. So yesterday I was watching your story, bro. Yes, sir. I fell backwards on a cactus. This one, this big ass cactus, and these spikes lodged into my skin. And I was I was pulling, one of them broke off, and I was like stuck in my calf. So every time I step, it's like, uh, uh, uh. And uh, she had me crack me up. Okay. So you're like, I had a great day today, except for one little one, thing. One thing. You man. fucking yeah. fell in a cactus, bro. Yeah, it was a pretty. Fuck? It was big. It was pretty. Oh big no, cactus. I saw that shit, yeah, bro. Yeah, this shit was yeah, huge. Was <laughs> yeah, it was big. How was like that, bro? How how was that? How was that like? You know. It was because. I went to go drop off some trees for some ladies. Lady came to the nursery, Bonita right. Creek Nursery. Shout out, plug hey, that. Hey, hey, hey. Um, come buy some fruit trees, get some food in your yard. But she came, bought some trees. I went to go deliver it. She's like, "Hey, I have this cactus here in my front yard. Can you take it out?" I was like, "Yeah." Can you jump so, on it? No, she's like, I was like, "Yeah, yeah." It's, you know, thirty dollars real quick. She's like, "Okay." I was taking it out, easy peasy, but it was heavy, and it was like three pieces. They're all like three feet to mm. five feet right they're pretty heavy i can only grab it by the root which is like fucking two inch i had like slippery gloves on so i had two pieces in there i'm on top of the bed of my truck and i'm pulling the cactus up and i just like lose my footing my hand slips and i just fall back on the other two pieces of cactus <laughs> just like right on my ass and like just punctures right in my ass cheeks and my, my like thigh and my calf <laughs> So you got fucked up, fucked up. Yeah, man. But and, but <laughs> later yeah, I was I was I was able to take out a lot. Right. But some broke off and like so lodged some into are still my skin. Inside of you? I have a little bit maybe. But I went to go train afterwards. Right. And fuck, it was hurting. I came back home and I just like pulled. No, like, I know. Three I saw you out, just dude. pulling a couple yeah, out. Yeah, dude, it was crazy, man. No, man, you gotta be careful with that. Yeah, dude, I cut my fucking finger nah, at work too, cut... man. Just I'm, I'm how'd that happen, man? Then. I was just cutting cutting a pot. I was trying to get this big old tree out of a pot, cutting it. My knife like malfunctioned, folded over Your my finger. Your knife malfunctioned, huh? Oh, yeah. How about that? Got to get the right so, equipment. Dude, I'm always seeing you out in the wilderness, and I'm sure everybody sees you because, yep. I mean, you're always, you know, sharing your story, yeah, which is fucking awesome. Do. But, uh, I mean, everybody knows you as a boxer, but yeah. nobody knows <laughs> really sure. the side of you behind the, the, the scenes side? of the nursery, bro. Yeah, you know, like everybody only sees what you show them, but... What's really going on with the nursery, man? Because I think that's very interesting, the fact that you're out there, you know, uh, working with trees and really have a passion behind it, which yeah. I thought was fucking cool. Um, well, I got into that um, through sustainability. I heard about sustainability, mm -hmm. like the major right? Um, at State. So I got into that 
and the major required a internship. Mm -hmm. And one of my teachers emailed me, said, hey, there's this internship, there's nursery, about 10 minutes away from my house. It's like, perfect. Um, so I go there, start doing my internship. I like it, um, what my boss is doing. I enjoyed it. I asked him if I could get a job, got a job. And as I'm working there, I'm realizing like, man, like I could, I think I could do something with this. You know, he's a, he, he specializes in like fruit trees, right. mostly exotic fruit trees. I'm trying to get more into total agriculture, like vegetables and fruit trees and just all that. Basically I want to basically yeah, everything yeah, I want to, uh, my goal is to own like a bunch of nurseries, okay. kind of like a, like a dispensary, but for fruit trees. Fruit and trees and vegetables trees. and stuff, yeah. So like you know uh, that wait, um, would they have vegetable trees? You know that no. Vons, that Vons shopping center over there where uh, there's Project like, Pie and McDonald's. Yeah, and yeah, all yeah right there. down the street. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. So it's like imagine that, but instead it's just like fields of you know just vegetables and or trees and stuff. People can go in and like pick their so your, the your, fruits that your they want. But like every every be... 30, 40 miles, I want it local. You know, I yeah, want yeah, all yeah. local stuff. So it's like basically a garden of fruit and vegetables that you're able to go in and buy your fresh products. Yeah, fresh product that was grown here. You can see where it was grown. It wasn't, right. you know, shipped and frozen and, you know, came across the country. So how that. much do you, I mean, I don't know if you know any information about this, but how much do you hustle. know about like a, about basically, you know, the way that fruit gets actually grown in, in a big corporate spectrum, you know? Honestly, I know you were I'm actually the one that showed me and told me to watch uh, What the Food? What, nah, no, no, no. What the Food? Uh, um, yeah, the one know, where it yeah. just basically explains how the yeah, industry... Yeah, what the, what the health. What the yeah, health, what the what health. The there health. you go. Yeah, I know yeah. it was what the something. Yeah, and that explains <laughs> yeah, a lot of the medical medical industry. No, nah, but Food Inc. is another good okay, one. Okay, okay. So okay. I got... I was into those documentaries right. growing up. I've always been to like nature, the jungle, fucking rainforest, fucking animals, Tarzan. all that. So yeah, that was me, man, growing <laughs> up. Now that I think about it, like looking back, I'm like, man, I even... There was a time when I was like 11, 12 where I wanted my... Uh, room painted like a jungle i was every time i went to the zoo i got freaking uh stuffed animals like tigers uh monkeys just so i could put around my room to decorate it like a jungle i was super into it um so it just makes sense that i'm i'm into uh conservation and what i really want to get into is yeah. jungle conservation but this is a way to make money obviously and still do what no, i love of course but i mean the big spectrum so jungle conservation like actually you know how would you say that like uh you know Conserving forests, conserving yeah, conserving woods, forests, you know, replanting, wildlife reforestation, like yeah, okay. um, the tribes there, empowering them, giving them the means to grow their own food, you right. know, because right now they, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them are kind of screwed by corporations. They go over there, buy land. And then they go and build their own Build land, their, their thing, their yeah, fuck up, yeah, like exactly. Uh, you know, all the wow, stuff. Yeah, that's so, fucking you know, crazy. Yeah. Food Inc., what the hell, check that out, everybody, you know. Yeah, it educated. really puts you on some shit. It makes you think about, like, damn, should I really be eating the shit that I'm eating right oh, now? Man, or? Yeah, it makes you second guess everything. But I think that's the hardest thing, man, like, because a lot of people well, know. Well, it's the convenience. That, you, you know, you like, know? a yeah. lot of people be putting, like, some shit that you're not supposed to in your body, you know, based on the stuff that you eat. And we well know what the hell is in our food exactly, now because yeah. just all the information we have now available to us. Um, but what is the how would you? I mean, what what what's your diet like? You know, my I just eat real food. That's what I try. So to for say. those people that don't know what real food is, because some for some people, real food is fucking McDonald's, like pop tarts, and yeah, shit you know, and pop tarts, that. hot yeah. pockets. And all I'm right, not gonna lie, I eat those sometimes, but you know. I mean, me too. But I just try to stay away from that. You and, know? and you know, it's funny. Like I, every time I eat something that is probably not the most healthiest thing for me, like I know. And it makes me feel a little like little guilty because I'm like I know I should have. Me been too. I get down on, but also I'm like you know whatever, man. I'm human. Yeah. I eat whatever. No, of but, course uh, you gotta feed yourself. If you're fucking starving. Like what? Are you but that that's what I'm trying to um, what I'm trying to change is the convenience. So yeah. I'm saying if you, because right now if you want like organic local food, you gotta go to like a farmer's market or not sprouts, even. and it's expensive. There you, you know? go. It's not even that. It's expensive as, expensive hell. as well. And it's a it's a mission to get it. So if I could make it easier for people and just make it part of everyday life, like yo, yeah, I'm gonna go down to the garden and just pick, pick out, out some shit. Yeah, for for dinner. Like I want it. I don't want it to make it a cool thing. I just wanted to make it an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. We're just. That's daily life that people are doing. You know. Yeah, because right now it's not convenient to eat healthy at all. I mean, besides the fact that you're gonna waste a lot of money. I mean, people aren't used to that because oh, yeah, it's, a struggle, you know, it's man. so it's much hard. easier to pop something in the microwave, pop something in the toaster, than rather, you know, actually especially cook working, it or, you know, work, and then you come in, yeah, eat it raw or cook, whatever yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then people don't like the way natural food tastes naturally because everything else tastes fucking. Yeah, well, they've been of, freaking. I don't know. They've been saturated that. with all this 
fats and salts and all that. Damn, you know? that's so. fucking nuts, bro. But yeah, we still eat it, and people still are out there. fucking I mean, I still eat it too, man. I'm you out know, there having in and out. It's all good. I know it's bad, but yeah, it's but delicious damn, though. Shit. Yeah. Shit. Nah, but what does it for me is that, like, I know that not right now that cheeseburger is gonna fuck me up. But like maybe in like twenty years, I'm gonna start yeah. seeing the effects of See, those yeah, cheeseburgers yeah. over you know? and over again. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's gonna fuck you up one one way or another. Um, but switching subjects, man. I mean, I know you freaking from boxing, right? Yeah. Growing up, you were a boxer, just beating down all these bullies because you know oh, yeah. you could. <laughs> How was that like, bro? Like knowing that when you were growing up you in a way always had an upper hand on people because you knew exactly what you <laughs> needed to do in order to fucking hurt someone, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, I tell people, I tell people that boxing has definitely made my, my confidence level right. up. Like I go, I go somewhere. I'm never worried. Right. You know, I'm never scared. Anything's going to pop off, but it doesn't make me a dick, right. you know, but I'm just, doesn't like make, a, it makes me not a pushover, you know. Like someone tells, yeah. Someone tells me something, I'm like, hey man, you know. You played a cool time. Bro. Time to relax, you know. But that's that's mainly what it is, and it just makes me feel that I can just, you know, I've gotten my ass beat multiple times, mm. and I came out fine, right? You know, so whenever something's going tough, I'm like, yo, I've I've been beaten down, I'm gonna come out fine after right. this, you know, so. And let, uh, let's touch on a subject you said. You've got your ass beat before, right? So for a lot of people, you know, sometimes getting your ass beat is equivalent to failing. You know, Yo, failing yeah, whether sure. it's adventure, failing whether it's at their job, their dream. Or I have failed multiple do, times. You know, too, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you, and especially in boxing, how do you take those losses, you know, those those the time that you get beat up and still be able to come back knowing that, you know what, that wasn't what I had and I still got more to prove? Yeah, man, that's that's what i've i've thought about multiple times when i first started boxing mm -hmm. when i was um, 13 i think i had my first fight um i lost my first fight mm -hmm. i got beat down um i lost my second fight i lost my third fight i won my fourth and i lost my next like three four mm -hmm. there's a time i was just like damn dude they, i fucking suck and my mm -hmm. dad used to box and my brother used to box everyone in my family used to box they yeah were good it's like damn dude i'm trash I felt like I had this pressure on me because yeah. everyone in San Diego knew who my dad was. They knew his skills. They mm -hmm. knew what he accomplished. And I wanted to quit, but I was like, nah, like, this, is, this isn't this is me. Like, I, I, I got this, man. Because in the gym, I'm, I was killing it. I, yeah. had, I had all the skills. Mm -hmm. It's just I just couldn't execute it in the fights yet. Um, but it just came to that point where I just started exceeding, exceeding and would, would you say that that's uh uh a product of you just you know continuing your training continuing oh, your yeah, routine that consistency, and stuff definitely. like that so let me ask you a question as far as your you know your routines uh your rituals and stuff like that what is something that always helps you stick to your routine to your structure and ultimately mm -hmm. to the end goal which is you know win fights you know what something that helps me stick to my routine a lot mm -hmm. is taking a break from it man Okay. Honestly, taking a solid two weeks of just kind of like deloading mm -hmm. and just getting back to it. Once you have that mental break, that physical break, you can just get back to it. Like, all right, you know, just, just jump into it. And then I just, I kind of remember how I felt. Right. I envision what I want to be like and just keeps me going. I'm like, all right, I'm not there yet, not there yet, not there yet, keep pushing. And it's funny that you say you take a break because most people were like the opposite. Oh, shit, I'm oh, not yeah, doing so hustle, good. Pedal hustle, to the hustle, metal. Hustle. I got to yeah, keep yeah. going. But I kind of agree with you on that because in a sense, like you kind of burn out. You oh, know? I've, I've, I've felt it. You I know have I mean? burnt out for sure. Yeah. So uh, this year, actually, this year and last year is this the biggest year that I have focused on self-care mm -hmm. you know just taking time for myself just relaxing not feeling like I have to accomplish so much you know we're still young we still have yeah. time to do so much we're still establishing our roots we're still putting our pawns in place exactly. to make the big yeah, move yeah yeah you know? adding up all your rocks and putting them up yeah, in a nice yeah. little like structures so that you know that you got your shit together exactly and that's actually funny that you said that because I was talking to Eric last week and we were saying like for me like I'm the biggest critic you know yeah so that's something that a lot of people you know struggle with dealing you know self criticism and oh, just putting huge, their man. self down you know that's a big problem with weight loss too oh, of people course. people on a diet and people go hard with diets, man. They're crazy. Yeah, they um, think that, like, you know, going all out is going to get them skinnier. You know, sometimes that's kind of dangerous. It's freaking insane. I never do that. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, once you like, I've noticed a lot of people once they cheat, they're like, ah, oh, you know, uh, I can't do diets. I might as well just fucking eat keep crappy. Eating. Yeah, yeah, just keep eating yeah, crappy. Yeah. It's like, nah, man, you slipped up. All right, just keep trying. You yeah. know, you're gonna slip up. Everyone slips up. So you know, when you slip going. up, what gets you back on track? And I mean, it happens to all of us, you know, because obviously some people fall off track and they're like, oh, well, that didn't work. Maybe I shouldn't keep on doing it. I mean, I, I just tell myself, okay, I, I messed up. Mm -hmm. Let's just do it again. Mm -hmm. let's, let's try again. Just, yeah. just keep going. You know, that's, I used to for sure be like, damn, I messed up. Why am I even doing this? This is pointless. Yeah. But I just, I don't know, something grew in me. I went through a change somehow. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, you know what? I just... Actually, it's a lot of reading uh, that okay. I've done okay. saying you can plan a lot, but if you don't do execute. it, if you don't execute, mm -hmm. it's never going to get done. So, you know, I messed up and I was like, all right, just execute again or it's not going to get done, you know, or else I'm never going to be in the shape that I want to be, you know, yeah, if, I no, don't, exactly. if I don't just do it. Yeah, definitely. And it sounds so simple, well, which yeah, kind of is, you know, but it's a, it's a whole mentality. There you go. You know, that's a big thing for me. I'm huge on mentality, but also I'm huge on execution because, mm -hmm. you know, I could have the right mindset. I could have all these plans in my head and all these right ideas. But at the end of the day, if I'm not putting these ideas into play, then what's the point what's of the even point? thinking yeah. about these ideas, exactly. reading all those books, you mm -hmm. know, taking all those courses when at the end of the day, you're not going to put these plans these actions into play, play you know yeah, so yeah. it's like gotta take a risk that's what always it is. bro it's a risk. always yeah. what would you say i mean talking about risk what would you say has been some of the risks that you've taken in your life and in your early career as of right now you know because i mean being a boxer and everything you know everybody always seems sees it like yeah okay that's just your hobby yeah, but for yeah. you it isn't no yeah I'm, I'm i'm doing it man i'm going going hard i don't i wouldn't say too many risks have been taken yet okay i'm how so just because with, with my career wise, I'm okay. still trying to build it up. You yeah. know, with my opponents, they're not at that risk mm. level yet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still building that up. I would say more sacrifice. Um, I guess risking relationships, I would say. Risking no, yeah, yeah. hurting people's feelings type dealing. Yeah. I've had to miss out on a lot of parties and birthdays, this, that, this, that. It's because, you know, I'm tired. I'm training. I got something mm -hmm. to do tomorrow morning. I got to spar, this and that. So that would be the biggest risk i guess i took no and for some people you know it's hard some people don't have that uh that willpower that self-strength to be able to be like you know what today i have to stay in or today i don't need to hang out yeah. with them or yeah, today yeah. i just need to be by myself because you know that fear of missing out um but i mean sometimes you got to be selfish with yourself so one thing that helped me with that though is that uh, my dad's my coach okay yeah so if i wanted to do something he's like hey where are you going you got a trainer tomorrow. Like, hey, you got you got to fight this weekend. We be home seven o'clock. I'm like, damn, bro, damn, damn, I can't do shit. Man. Yeah. So how how uh, how impactful has it been? You know, having your dad there as your coach, and also your dad, because my I mean, dad, yeah, at, at the end of the day, I mean, dynamic, being a coach sure. is a one Very thing, right? And yeah, then yeah. being your dad is a different thing. Now, when you mix them together. How does that work out for you guys? We have a very good dynamic. Um, you know, we, we work well. He knows the type of boxer mm -hmm. I am. We joke around a lot, so that, that gets us gets us through the serious. And you motherfuckers part of are so sarcastic, oh, sarcastic bro. Like, yeah, with to everything. The Every, ass, yeah, like, everything. I don't even know if to when I'm talking ass, to you guys yeah. if it's like, you know, serious. If it's real, or yeah. Because no, I gotta no, like double sure. think like, is he serious yeah, right yeah, now? Should yeah, I definitely. answer? Or is this motherfucker gonna pull yeah, a yeah. prank on me? People People definitely know me for that. No, no, yeah, definitely. So that's cool, yeah, man. Serious I, I, that, conversation. That's always good to, that you guys have a good, uh, you know, uh, relationship and the dynamics work yeah, out well yeah. because I know that it could be very, uh, you know, parents' emotions get in the way sometimes. You know, your emotions get into the way sometimes because they see things one way, but you see them another way. No, but yeah, at the end of the day, he's your coach. There, so there have like, been I, times you where know, uh, I have kind of taken breaks from boxing and – he got on me. He's like, "Hey, you're a bum. You're not doing this. You're you're not taking it serious. This and that. You got to get on me." I'm like, "Yeah, oh, like relax. I'm just, I'm just taking a breather. I don't want to burn out with this." No, like, no, no, yeah, definitely. But you know, he's my coach and also my father, so he's trying to get on me. It, serious. It's like in a way, I feel like it's double pressure. Oh yeah, for you sure. know what yeah, I mean? Because yeah, like you got that pressure. From I can't your wait coach. to move out, man. Because <laughs> at one point, I know bro, you're just damn. now my now you're just my coach. Bro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nice, nice, my coach, dog. See, see at the gym. 
all right. So a lot of pe- I mean, a lot of people in our age right now are in that like little bubble where it's like, you know, should I move out or should I stick with my parents? You know, what's your what's your look on that, bro? Because I mean, like a lot of people are eager to just dip out. Yeah, but then yeah. at the same time, that comes with the whole new responsibility yeah, that you know your house lot, isn't gonna be clean because sometimes you know you're not the cleanest, busy, and, yeah, you know, and then you got busy, a whole man. bunch of other shit going yeah. on that you don't have time to take care of the things that you have already at home. Mm-hmm. So I mean, what would you what do you think about that? Well, if you if you can make it work, yeah, go ahead and do it. You know, if you have to sacrifice going out and you're fine with that, yeah. all right. But if you know if your lifestyle doesn't fit with that, stay stay with your parents and save some money, man. Okay. Honestly, um, I want to move out. I just don't think I have the finances for that yet, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, no. Of but I definitely want to move out. Um, I want to miss my family a little bit. Mm-hmm. I haven't missed them. Yeah. Um, in forever because I'm always around them. So, I'm gonna get away from them for a bit. No, I mean I, I'm one to that say that I love, uh, I love having my alone time because yeah. that's time where I could just reflect on myself i don't have the influence and some thoughts of anybody else you know because that's what's a big thing for me sometimes you know when i'm like hanging out with a whole bunch of my friends and i hang out with them for a long time whether i like it or not we all start thinking the same way Mm -hmm. because of all the time that we spend together everything that we're saying it's all basically you know the same and sometimes i literally i kid you not i like to just have a day to myself where i turn off my phone i don't answer any calls and i really just recharge my energy yeah man you have to isolate yourself sometimes you know? it's, and then it's, it's amazing it's crazy because that little time is it allows me to know how i am who i am and what i am you know yeah a lot of it's the, the fucking distractions man the iphone on the Instagram and Twitter and it's just everything. There's so many distractions. On and I'm glad around. you brought that up because I know for, you know, growing up, you were the type of person that would be on social media, but then said, fuck social media, but yeah, then you know, yeah, be over, back yeah, in and out, in and, in and out. out yeah, yeah. What's your real thoughts and like the way that life is right now, the way business is generated, the way, you know, people are living their lives. How much of an impact does social media have on people from your point of view? Huge, and man. how do you think it affects and helps people okay well yeah well there's definitely pros and cons yeah no sure. of course um what well, it, it depends on the person man some people okay. can see it they see other people's lives they're comparing themselves like damn i'm not doing that yeah i'm not doing this i'm over here in school freaking being boring i should be at coachella or this and that look at this I'm guy's not... life he just freaking went on another vacation yeah oh, look at this guy yeah. just bought a new shiny or like toy. oh man this person just graduated school this person got a promotion like You can get real down on yourself. See, that's the thing, though, that I really think about it. Like, you know, when you go on social media, like nobody's posting their fucking L's. You know, no, that's why I love posting what happens. You know what I mean? Like, because that's you're one of the people that's very honest out there. And I actually give you a lot of respect for that. Yeah. Because some people are only going to go and put their, you know, their happy moments and shit like that. You know, like, and and then for me, sometimes, you know, I post when I have bad shit too because I'm like, fuck it. Like, what do I got to lose? Like, you know, I don't have nothing to lose. I know where I'm going as Mm -hmm. long as I'm okay within myself. Like, you're going to see, you're going to see where I end up, you know, after, after all this. Oh, and that's the best so cool. thing bro that like the people that don't understand the vision that you have they'll never they'll never will bro because nah, unless man. they can hack your brain <laughs> then that's the only way they're really going to be able to understand but i just think for, for me social media i mean it helps a lot in business nowadays for sure. business for sure. and connecting and just you know no, yeah it's, it's, it's the easiest way to just network yeah, yeah. but but people aren't always going to show their true face, you know? Oh, and I, I, I get this a lot. People asking me, like, you know, how do you, uh, you know, just always have the will to just put your face out there, you know, and just, like, bladder yeah. out and, like, do your shit. I'm like, because, one, I'm only in competition with myself. Mm-hmm. Two, you know what? Like, if people don't like it, they could always swipe right. That's exactly You know what I mean? I like, I'm here to post what yeah, I want. Yeah. This is my page. This is my yeah. story. So you have the option of watching my shit or not. That's why I just started. I actually got that from you because you just started posting. Just <laughs> going, going, going. So I'm like, damn. And I saw, like, how it generates a buzz. You yeah, know? yeah, of course. And I always knew. Whether I it's always good or knew, bad. Yeah, exactly. And I always knew social media is a powerful tool if you use it right if you use it correctly yes yeah. so i'm just like yo i just gotta start posting content let people know that mm-hmm. i'm here i'm boxing mm-hmm. so i just started posting whatever you know just whatever even I any wanted, little you snippet of your saying? day bro yeah, you never like, know like people are watching they yes. might not give you if props, you don't yeah you know, if you don't but they might care watching whatever if you care cool like it's there fuck man. It. you know yeah. like same thing if you don't fuck with me i don't care 
Yeah, but if you right. fuck with me, hey, props, and I Sick. love you. Yeah, we'll keep doing it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's it, because that's all I'm doing. I'm trying to out here just, you know, motivate and inspire people to, you know, get off their ass and do something with themselves, you know? Because we all have potential, bro. That's the oh, thing. Yeah, everyone. And the crazy thing is that I see it in a lot of people, bro. And the hardest thing is when they don't see it in themselves. And trying to just even, like, paint that picture to them is so difficult, it's diff- bro. Yeah, it's, it's so it's, difficult. It's frustrating, man, honestly. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I've seen I've seen it multiple times. Um with boxers that my my dad's had i've seen it friends that we have you know it's just you tell them like dude you could you could do something you know you yeah couldn't. and you're over here almost like so passionate because uh, motherfucker, i know yeah, that you could man, do this do. and they don't have that confidence in themselves or they just don't want to yeah I don't know what it is. and it's funny how that saying goes that silly as and cliche as it sounds is you could take the horse to the lake but you can't make it drink the water you know, nah, so it's like I you can tell someone all the good stuff and all the stuff that you believe about them, but if they don't believe it in themselves, then that they're, they're gonna never going to be yeah, able yeah, to execute it. Ever. I mean, it's shit, it's hard. It sounds weird, but <laughs> it is what it is, bro. It Honestly, weird. bro, it really is. Um, <laughs> so weird. nowadays, bro, like you mentioned, everybody's so, so attached to their phone, right? Or yeah, so yeah. attached to the social media. How do you see, how do you see, uh, you know, society in general basically interacting nowadays because i feel like i'm the type of person that i'm gonna go and start a conversation with anybody because i just feel like i have that comfort yeah you know but nowadays it's almost as people get offended when you go out and try to talk to them in real life when in reality not too not too many uh years back motherfucker we didn't have any of this shit and you literally had to do this right here talk how do you think with the way we're going people's like interacting so right. well uh, it's different man because you have all those uh like dating apps and yeah. stuff so people can link up on there and mm-hmm. i guess they're interacting more through that yeah but i definitely notice it when i'm going out um doing whatever mm-hmm. have to wait in line boom people are automatically on their phone man just boom boom automatic waiting in line boom on their phone waiting somewhere boom on their phone no nobody wants to talk to you nobody wants to make eye contact I remember for a minute I had a flip phone. So when I when yes, I went out, I remember like that. I was just sitting there and I, I was chilling. And I was like, that. yo, everyone's on their goddamn phone. Like, Fuck I can just shit. fucking, I could, I could just like got naked and nobody would have noticed, man. Because everyone just freaking scrolling through yeah. there. But thank God you didn't timeline. Do that, I know. Yeah, this would have been, been a riot. <laughs> uh, man, you're silly. So, all right. I'm sure along your career and what you've been doing, like you've accumulated people that, uh, you know, said some stuff that they probably, you know, didn't believe in you or didn't see in you or, you know, people that just talk shit and like to say like, yeah, you're never going to do that. Like, why don't you put that shit away? How do you yeah. deal with all those naysayers and doubters? Honestly, I haven't had too many people okay. talk shit about it, but I haven't like question it like yo why why are you doing this you know mm. like you don't have to do this mm-hmm. why are you doing this this is not a guaranteed thing you could do something else and i just i just love it i feel like i i know i can do something with right. this you know i've i've been told i have been told i've been complimented more times on my boxing than than uh put down about right. it you okay. know so that's I just think back to those compliments, those times that I grow or learn something new and my improvements. Every time I improve, I'm just like, yo, I can get better. You know, I yeah. can always get better. Yeah, definitely. They say, yo, you're not that good. I can get better. You mm-hmm. know, you're not that fast. I can get faster. You're not that strong. I can get stronger. Whatever it is, I can do it. You know, that's how I feel. That's and that's a is. that's a good mentality to have because you're always you know you know where you're at but you always know that you could get better yeah. so in a way you're always still always you know, improving man exactly. always learning always no that's that's awesome because a lot of people once they hear that uh, negativity or they don't get the feedback that they like they shut all down. of a sudden they yeah exactly they shut down yeah. I think that's stupid because like regardless if you gotta see take yourself, that criticism if you see yourself which is a really good thing that you said if you see yourself doing something then that right there it's a strong feeling oh dude you know yeah, because if powerful, you don't if you powerful. don't see yourself doing it then why the fuck are you then, doing it yeah there's no, <laughs> you know no what purpose. i mean like and then that's what i feel a lot of people get caught up in right now that they're going and doing stuff that is working for other people and they feel oh, that it's yeah. easily gonna for work sure. for them that one yeah and you i know? think that's a big thing with uh 
back to the social media. And yeah, all that. yeah, you yeah. know, they see people and they're like, oh, maybe I could do that. Everyone wants to be freaking yeah. viral, of mm-hmm. freaking Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, yeah, any, star, any way that they can get that star. viral, like you yeah. know, uh, publicity or you know, go so big on everyone. That, like, yeah, you know? everyone's on that. Everyone's doing the new challenge. Everyone's yeah. You know, yeah, I, every 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 little day or every, every little job. That, oh, they're making money with that. Maybe I could do that. I'll do that. Yeah. And everyone's following. And you know? one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of people, you know, they'll see all these people that are actually, you know, successful, right? You know, you look at the entrepreneurs that are successful, the artists, the, um, you know, the athletes, you know, everybody, and they go and compare themselves to where they're at right now. Yeah. But I think you got to mm-hmm. think about it, and you can't compare your day three to somebody's like day 100 yeah um i remember xavier he came over to my boxing gym one time and he wrote down on the uh on the whiteboard and it made me think man like yeah. it's super simple but he wrote down every expert was a beginner and i was like yo that's so true man like, everybody had a first and day. every time you hear these successful athlete actors rappers stories they're like yo i was down in the dumps eating this yeah freaking yeah. hustling out here freaking eating blah blah and then one day they keep grinding keep grinding boom they things start to shoots happen up. yeah man and it's funny because the common denominator in all those equations is that one they see themselves doing it they're resilient they're consistent and they don't give up no matter yeah, what yeah they just keep going and man. that's where a lot of people think that like maybe from one day to another it's gonna happen that's but what we yeah, gotta realize that everybody's on their, yeah everybody wants instant gratification mm-hmm. you know you we gotta realize that we're on a path you know we're on the grind we're on the come up so you know it's gonna take time you see all these successful people like you said they didn't grow they didn't go from night to day no you know yeah. they're, they're there are some for sure no definitely Maybe, but like you, you know, know those are the rare cases the, yeah you know those are exactly freaking shooting star yeah you know? no that's one in a million um but you know it, it, i think it's just crazy because like you know some people grind their whole life and they give up right before they could have had the biggest breakthrough you know yeah um damn that reminds me bro because <laughs> i follow this like entrepreneur dude on yeah. uh, instagram what's his name <laughs> don't even know don't care don't care, um, but but uh, he was yeah, he's pretty <laughs> smart. Um, he was saying how like these young people have this, the young entrepreneurs especially, yeah. have this thought where they need to have instant success, you know. Exactly. But he gives uh, an analogy to a bamboo tree. He's like a bamboo mm. tree for the first like five years, hey, it's not growing. You know, you plant it, it's it's barely growing, but underneath the soil, it's growing out its roots. It's getting that base, it's getting that foundation ready. Yeah, After that five years, boom, it shoots up. So he's saying a lot of people quit in that third, fourth year when mm-hmm. they could have fucking just stuck it out and then boom, shot up. You know? So. No, yeah, I agree with you a hundred percent. That's yeah. my biggest thing. When uh, whenever you're starting something new, my thing is just like you gotta lay down the right foundation. You know, and I think that's the biggest most important thing because if you build a foundation off sticks like just any bad little thing happens and your foundation has gone Come but if you yeah. deep and root that shit and you fucking like nail that shit down cement it and make it fucking stable anything can happen and your foundation strong. is always there yeah, everything might fall but you know that your foundation Start up again is already there so you again. can always go right back up yep no, that's and dead. that's the same mentality with, you know, you slip up, boom, just get right back on track. Yeah, man, you know and you know, I, I feel like that's the biggest thing because, like, we ourselves are professional beater-uppers, you know? So, like, oh, once yeah. once we fail that first time or we get off track, we're just like, eh, I'm already off track. Yeah, Why even do that? Keep, yeah, I just... But we got to realize, I feel like, at least for myself, we got to realize that we are not perfect. You know, oh, we're yeah. fucking human. I have definitely realized that. You know, like yeah. that. Like, I'm, I'm not invincible. Yeah, sure. Like, shit, I realize that too. Like, yeah. you know, but like, it's like, we're only humans. And as long as you're aware of the shit that you're doing bad and you're able to put an end to it or exactly. you're able to switch yeah. directions. Or try to and, put and, the yeah, effort intentions, into Have it. the intentions. Yeah. And as long as you know, you're winning because eventually over time, those intentions are going to become actions and those happen. actions yeah. become habits. Those mm-hmm. habits become ultimately your skills. Yeah. And I just think it's crazy how people just give up so easily nowadays. Like, it's so tragic. I think it's crazy how, like, I used to... I used, as a kid, I used to hear about this shit, like the mentality. Yeah. I don't know if you ever heard the book, that that, that CD, The Secret. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, seen you the put, story. You, put yeah, your yeah. thoughts out in there. Yeah, yeah, put your thoughts out there and things. And my parents used to talk about that. I was like, y'all are crazy, bro. How am like, I going to talk of a million dollars yeah, and make like, it happen? Yeah, like, it's just going to pop like up poker. in the fucking microwave. But now that I'm older and I'm 
like that it makes so much sense it bro. Really you does. wake up with a positive attitude of what you're gonna do what you want to accomplish that's gonna turn into actions and you're just gonna start and doing it's crazy because people think that like by you thinking about it or manifesting it in words it's gonna happen like you know out of the blue no it won't no, happen yeah, like that like not, you won't yeah. just think a million bucks and bam it's putting you back. it's basically putting you in the but what it will it. do me, it's it gonna is. put your your life and yourself subconsciously into the situations where you're you're gonna yeah. attract that or you're gonna uh -huh. open up doors to get you closer to that and exactly. that's what it's all about you know like you don't know how the fuck it's gonna happen but it's gonna happen someone's gonna come into your life you're gonna meet someone you hear something that sparks your brain or sparks your ideas and then you're like oh shit like i know what i need to do yeah but that's all because you were <laughs> yeah. fucking telling yourself in your head like in your head and your brain subconsciously is fucking finding those fucking clues all the time fucking, always like, working doors you know yeah. so that you could exploit and then go into what the fuck you really want to do all the time yeah that's it's exactly, and it's that's funny exactly what happened laugh, to me, bro. bro. People yeah. laugh at that. Same here, bro. Like, I, I, people laugh at me because I see things different than than they do. But I'm like, I honestly, I just see a vision that, like, I see myself just completing wanted, and yeah, doing, yeah. and I'm not stopping until I complete that. And then I'm gonna take on the next mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, then, like that. Then it's on to the it's next. It's on to one. the next one. We got yeah, this yeah. one done. And the thing is that, like, I don't ever want to get comfortable. No, that's a, that's a big thing too, man. Comfortability. You get you get comfortable. That's dangerous, you know, very, mm. very dangerous. And it's hard to get out of because comfortable yeah. is nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> comfortable yeah. feels good. You're chilling. You don't want to make it. Then that's fine. You know, you yeah, can no. be comfortable. If you want to be okay. comfortable. Like, I'm not saying don't. Go ahead, yeah, but, but I'm, I yeah. don't. I, I can't. make moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I wanna, of course. I, I want to be comfortable when I'm later, you know? Yeah. I said I when I'm later. I said later. Yeah. When you're later. I said when I'm later. <laughs> later in life. Yeah, no, but it's all like, good. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, no, keep we'll going. Edit that Whoa, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, but yeah, no, I think it's just crazy. I mean, like the mentality works in mysterious ways. Mm. Um, but once you're actually able to fucking like you know trigger what you want and actually start working with your thoughts and actually start rebooting your brain because oh, you're I think a that's, weapon, bro. that's insane, bro. Yeah. And it's like whatever you put in your fucking head, you are. Yeah. Like I always say, if you think you're the shit, you fucking are. Definitely. If you think you're shit. You, you are. fucking That's, are too. Yeah. So it's whatever perspective you look at it, because at the end of the day, nobody could tell you what you are besides you. Whenever I think of something like that, bro, I think of DJ Khaled. Yeah. Because I think dude is weird, but he is the man at bro, the same time. Look at his time, fucking you know? track record, you know? Like, I mean, like, motherfuckers been doing this for how long? And he's still, long. like, no shame. People always shit talk him, but motherfucker delivers. Yeah, man. Always. He's like, right. hands down. Crazy. He's nasty. Dude, that's ridiculous. But he's so weird. What's your favorite song so by funny. DJ Khaled, actually? Um, I don't know. I don't know, huh? But you yeah. just fuck with his attitude it's and his energy, huh? DJ Khaled! And you know it's going to be a fucking good-ass yeah, yeah, song oh, anthem. Damn, so but that's the funny thing. Like, before, like, he started branding himself, like, I did notice that every fucking summer this fool would come out with a sick-ass song or a sick-ass yeah. album. And that until he actually started putting himself out there more and more and more. I started realizing, like, yeah, I didn't oh, really, shit, yeah. like, now I'm looking back at all his stuff. I'm like, this fucker's right. Exactly. I didn't and, know and, who the hell DJ Khaled was. I didn't until either, bro. All I knew is that motherfucker loved to scream and everything, you know? Yeah. But that that's crazy, bro. Yeah. Um, what type of music are you listening to right now? Me? It's just everything, honestly. Actually, I'm listening to a lot of uh, older music, like freaking... Oh, like, shit. What's older music? Bro? I mean, like, like 70s funk type. Oh, fuck like, yeah. Like groovy type yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've been on that, but always, you know, hip hop and... Rap. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who would you say for right now is your most influential artist or the one that you listen to the most? <sighs> the one I listen to the most. Probably this guy named Boss. Um he signed to, oh, okay. to J. Cole. To huh? J. Cole, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dreamville Records. I like him. Okay, a lot. cool. Um Sebi, obviously. Sebi OG. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Shout out to my boy Sebi. Hey. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. That's um, cool. See the thing the weird thing with me for music, bro, is uh I listen to like a playlist of I wanna say it's fifteen songs. Yeah, let's and, and and then then I just I'll yeah. play them on repeat, bro, and that's all that I'll play, and like yeah, I remember in high school you got stuck on a couple songs, dude, couple and I times. I still do, bro. <laughs> like I'm on one. <laughs> oh, uh, There's another song, the one by uh, uh, by Wiz Khalifa, fucking um, nah, the one by Lil Wayne, bro, that you really liked, uh, bro. I, I really liked a lot of songs, yeah. and I still do, bro. I built up my Marco knows he fucking I built up my fucking library, and I only listen to the same songs. Ones, but look at this, spit every the lyric thing behind that. The, every the ad thing, The thing behind that, Mama. Is, is that I honestly it gets me in a mindset of rep like repetition, oh, and yeah. the words that they're saying is what I like. 
I'm, I'm, um, my mood is on. Okay. So like that shit just keeps me in sync. You yeah. Know? It sounds weird, but that shit just works for me. Like I, if you, you ask me, Brian, what are you listening to? I'm probably still listening to a song from like fucking 2010 that I just really. Oh, that's for with. sure. I I still listen to throwbacks. Definitely, yeah. No. Definitely. That's it. Uh, but for me, I think the most influential rapper or artist out there right now is Big Sean. Oh, and big just times. because what he says, he was big in high school. He was, sure, he really me, was, me. and for me, it just his words and the way he spits really resonates into what I'm trying to do in life and the way that I look at shit. You know, okay, yeah. I think he's very spiritual and very you know motivated in the way of uh, he wants to get his grind but, yeah. on, and but he's about it in a way where it's positive and he's not out there, you know, how do I say, being that fucking ignorant rapper being that's thug. just bullshitting and fucking you know trying being to get clout. Whatever. I hate whatever that, bro, it takes. because once that fucking. Uh, that little phase in the career is done, then like either you're done or you got to step up and actually deliver some shit that people actually, yeah. cause you know, after you get to the bullshit, like people got to go to school, want, get you know, a career. They, they kind of want to see, okay, what's beyond what's that. Do now? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. no, definitely. So growing up, bro, who would you say, you know, was those people that really influenced you or that you looked up to, you know, whether it was like, you know, your family member, or, you know, someone, you know, that was famous, you know, it was definitely uh, Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the homie. Nah, my dad, grandpa, brother, easy, okay. bro. Them I easily. And the other boxers around the, the gym, because my my uh, my grandpa, and my father ran a boxing gym. Growing up, right now it's kind of shut down. Right now it's just for me. I use it. It's over there at my, my grandpa's house yeah, right yeah, off yeah. Palm Avenue. And, uh, you know, they used to have a lot of pro pro boxers, amateur boxers. There's like 20, 30 guys in right. the gym at one time. So just them growing up in that environment, growing up around them, people in school, but mainly my grandpa, my brother, and my, my dad. Man. Okay. No, my mother, my, my family, bro. Like, I'm the youngest one. My, my sister's... Nine years older than me. Right. My brother's eight years older than me. So I just looked up to them, man. They're yeah. Just, they're very different. They're very, very different. Well, so yeah, I was, David from your sister from you. It's like Yeah, spectrums. it's very different people. So I was able to see a lot and get a lot of different uh, perspectives and views on life and stuff. But now I'd always, I always, uh like, since we were kids, we remember we used to always go walk fucking to your house after high school. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, that was... And then, no, no, okay. That backyard but, uh, boxing. There, you fucking took it out of my fucking mouth. Yeah, no. That shit was crazy, bro. <laughs> It was, dude. Honestly, I think at about the same that. Time. Like, damn, damn we had some good times. We did. That was fun. What was Cops came, man. What was, yeah, no, right? Like, shit, nah, we just boxed it back here. It's not yeah, good. yeah. And they're like, oh, all right. Okay, cool. Continue yeah, on. Just like, someone threw some together. fruit out of a car, so we got to Eric, figure that out. Fucking Eric. Basket. Fucking Eric. Still throwing shit. No, yeah. motherfucker. Hey, what would you say was your favorite fight from there? My favorite fight. And I have one already Oof. in my head. And Ricky Wasim, say, bro. Okay, shit. Okay. Ricky Wasim, because Ricky hit him with the spinning back fist. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're Nasty. right. Hey, shout out Nasty, Ricky. Spinning dude. fucking back fist. Don't mess with UFC my boy. Shit. Don't mess with the boy. Dude, mine, I'm not going to lie. And you probably already know what I'm going to say is fucking Sebi Naeem. Oh, yo. Bro, that was a good one, too. When bro, fucking Sebs, Sebi just hit hands. him with a motherfucking windmill Ping. punch. <laughs> Sleep. That was crazy. I was nervous, too. I was like, dude, this motherfucker better get up. Dude, <laughs> like, you he better, he can't not be knocked out of my house. Because he was younger than us at the time. Yeah, man. He was way younger than us. Like so, shit. You want to roll with the big boys? Sebi's a bully, bro. Yeah, no, fucking sad, yes. bro. Bully ass guy. Always in his music. Fucking guy. Yeah. Um, so, what, what would you say? And, like, you know, a lot of people only see what they see on social media or from the people that know you. But what would you say is one thing about you that other people wouldn't know? One thing. Or wouldn't even expect of you. Wouldn't you expect. You got any hidden tones? Shit. Damn, bro. Um, What's one thing? I, would, I don't know, bro. Because I don't know people's perspective on me other than that I box and I go to school. I'm, I'm really into health. I guess okay. I'm really into. I cry a lot. That's one thing people might not know. I cry a lot, bro. Okay, funny that you said that about crying. Yeah. Sometimes I mean I don't cry. I'm not a fucking no, cry no, baby. No, no, I'm no, no. But listen, listen. listen but that, that sometimes, I get frustrated and I yeah. cry it out. It's good. Then I handle shit. I beat your ass. Man. No, yeah, yeah. And for me, sometimes like I'll be listening to a Just song or I'll be thinking to something and I cry. And I'm not crying because it's like, fuck, like I'm that. sad, like Fucking, you said. Yeah. It's just because I'm like, damn, like I'm so close to this or yeah, I'm on this path. And it's like, I'm just so grateful that I'm even able to be on a path where I'm headed to where oh, I want bro, to that's, go. You know? That's happiness. And, then, 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 I yeah, and I cry that, for dude, happiness, shit, bro. You know, I and it's funny because I'm like, I haven't even been on that level yet. Am I really about to cry right now? Actually, no, on my sister's wedding, that happened. 
Uh, I still can't. I, I uh, my down. sister hasn't got married yet, so I'm gonna get back to you on that one. Uh, all right, let me know. <laughs> let me know if it happens. If you cry, that's what I'm saying. Just, nah, you know, yeah, I might just... cry. Like the thing with my sister, bro, is that like I only have one sibling. Mm-hmm. Well, I, technically I have others, but like yeah, we yeah. we don't I really know. fuck yeah. with each other. Um, but the thing about my sister, bro, is that we grew up, you know, thankfully the same age. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the beginning we had a really r- rough, uh, you know, relationship because we would fight a lot. I remember that one time? So, so there's one time about uh, him and Adrian, uh, I mean him and Adrian. Damn. Hey, me and Adrian. <laughs> uh, Ricky and Adrian spent the night, right? And, uh, we had just gotten out. My sister's room was across mine and, um, uh, you know, Brian. It's like is two a, in the morning. Yeah. Two in the morning. And Brian's just fucking always known for making noise and Still making high. ruckus, right? So I go in there like making a shitload of noise, Homie, Jeremy doing my probably thing, you know, just fucking being a tonto fucking, you know. All drunk and shit, but whatever. Anyways, my sister comes out and she's like, Hey, Brian, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I look back at Ricky and Adrian and I'm like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> Like if that's hey going to make it any better and if they were the ones that were freaking, you know, like making the fucking noise and, and we shit. We just laughed, made it louder. That's yeah, funny. I didn't go fuck though. Shit, fuck it, bro. <laughs> Where you are now, man. Yeah, no, shit. but it's, it's crazy. Though. Like for me, like when I when I started doing all these videos, bro, like, I always say this, bro. It wasn't because I wanted to, you know, get famous or fucking become super fucking like, you know, popular, bro. I honestly started it because I was fucking not confident in myself, you know, and I wasn't, you know, okay. accountable to myself. You Getting know? out of your comfort zone. Yeah, bro. So I'm like, fuck, fuck, if I put this shit out there, like, if I don't do it, I'm a bitch. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the, I'm true. no bitch. Mama raised yeah, no bitch. So yeah. that right there just fucking did it for me, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. And then slowly people would fuck with what I was saying. And then, like, you know, they'd actually, like, oh, more. Like, you know, or I love what you're doing. Yeah, I yeah. like the shit that you're saying. It gets me going. Like, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, maybe I'm not just doing this for myself, you know? Maybe people and actually I, like I never, it. I'm never going to try and tell someone what to do because that's not my job. No, yeah. People are too different to no, try to not tell. At all. Yeah. But what I will do is share my experiences, share my stories, share what's worked for me. And hey, if it works for you, then fuck yeah, you know? Yeah, fuck yeah. try it and out. And if it yeah, doesn't, then it shit, you got to go figure it out on your own because ultimately that's what we all got to do. Yeah, man. Um, that's what, and that's what, circling back to what you say, people are trying to do what celebrities do and this and yeah, that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they see one plan work and like, yo, I'm a copy that plan. And if that plan doesn't work for them, they're like, all right, well, then I guess this is path is not meant for me. Yeah. It's like, nah, man, just that plan didn't work. Like specialize it to you. Everyone is so different. You know, we yeah. respond to different yeah, yeah, foods, no, different workouts. Like we, you just got to specialize things to you. Man. You, you got to do what works for you and go and do that because what yeah, works man. for someone else doesn't always work for you. Oh yeah. You know, and that's sure. like whenever I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm thankful to be around some people that are, you know, pretty successful. Um, you know, I get to go out to meetings and meet people that are doing big things and stuff like that. You know, people that own businesses. Mm-hmm. And my thing is that I don't ever ask them like, oh, what are you doing right now? You know, what that's, did you, you know, yeah. you know, that's growing your business. You know, I ask them like, hey, when you were in my like, you know, my well, shoes, what at were this you moment, doing? What were you doing? Yeah. Oh, I, you know, I was focusing on generating leads. Oh, I was focused on getting in front of as much people as I could. Oh, I was focusing on making the right connection. Yeah, yeah. Then I go and do that. Because if I ask them, what are you doing right now that's, you know, getting you business? And they say, oh, I'm spending all this money on marketing. No, I'm getting all this. So you're not I don't have all that shit, bro. So I'm miserably going to fail for sure. That's crazy that you say that, bro. Because the one thing that turned me on to kind of just like reading more and just kind of focusing on my boxing, my nursery shit, is I I heard someone say, I'm going to screw it up. But it was something along the lines of like, I'm what I'm doing today is... Like what I envision the person who I want to be in the future was right. So right, right, he right, like, right, who he wants to be in the future, he's doing what that guy was doing today. Yeah, you know. So no, I'm like, definitely. yo, I want to be professional boxer. What was right. he doing today? He was fucking working out and doing this, eating right, blah blah. So that's yeah. how I try to approach every day, you know. And that's that's fucking amazing because people like get caught up in like trying to get everything done and have success as fast as possible right away but like yeah, for me bro it's like and i, gotta, I get caught up in that too like we I'm all do bro i, I mean like i said yeah. we're human but the thing is like you gotta get your habits right bro you gotta get yeah. your rituals right and you gotta get your routine right bro. like yeah, what would big. you say is one of your biggest habits and you know your what is your routine actually bro my routine is great okay so i work at the nursery right? yeah so i work with 
Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday is like for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, eight hours from about like eight to four, seven thirty to thirty, we're right there. Yeah. And then <clears throat> I have this strength and conditioning that I go to Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays from nine to ten thirty. Right. And then I train at the boxing gym Monday through Friday from okay. five. Or I leave my house like around five thirty, get home like around eight thirty, nine o'clock. Right. Um, on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, we're not doing anything. I'm either taking my dogs out or I'm reading on how to run a nursery, mm-hmm. how to garden, how to do this, how to improve. I'm massaging myself. I'm stretching. I'm focusing a lot on stretching, massaging myself. Yeah. I beat my body up and I definitely have not taken well, care of it the way that I have fucking, been. Like literally like that. Too much shit, or something, bro. and I'll be falling on cactuses and all that. It's yeah, bro, you gotta quit that, bro. It's not fun for yeah, me. Yeah, man, cutting me. fingers and all that shit. So, so I, gotta... I mean, I don't know if you heard this before, but like, supposedly they say that you can love more than two people, right? I believe that. You know? Yeah. So, when it comes to, you know, your love for the nursery and sustainability, but then also for the love of boxing and what that has to go with it, if you had to the opportunity to make it big in both of those and complete, you know, your ultimate mission, which one would you pick? Well, that's the... Oh, shit. Shit, huh? Shit is right. Well, look, that's <laughs> that's the whole goal with boxing. Right. Before, I was kind of boxing just because I was born into it. And you're good at it. I was born, I was good at it. I was, you know, dad fought, brother fought, I was doing it. Mm-hmm. But then, like, around 18, 19, 20, I was like, yo, why the fuck am I doing this? Like, I wanted to get good, and I wanted yeah. to get, like, money and just that, all that stuff. But I didn't want to be famous. You exactly. know, I don't like that celebrity status type stuff. I don't want people all over me bugging me. I right, love my right, alone right. time. If I was like that, I would go crazy. Yeah, you lose your fucking privacy oh, dude, when you go I famous. Was, I would yeah, go yeah. crazy. So I was like, yo, why why am I doing this? If it's, and I knew it was for money, but I didn't know why I wanted money. Like, I wasn't chasing money, mm, you know? Okay. And okay. then I finally got into sustainability, and then at the nursery, and then that's when I was like, yo. Kind of find a purpose. Yeah, I was like, yo, I can I can get dull with boxing. I'm good at this, mm. you know? I'm, I'm good at boxing. I can I can really beat people up, you know? I can Fuck, get some money oh, with geez. this. <laughs> I can beat but people up. But with that, I can, get, I can get a... I can get some sort of platform and yeah. talk about what I want to do with mm-hmm. reforestation, conservation, and um, just the nursery. So if I had to choose, it would be boxing, but just so I can get the funds to go fucking accomplish what I want to do. With that's a fucking bro. amazing answer, bro. Yeah, that's, that and I don't like, think I could have put it any better myself. Like that's what I'm trying to Cause do. Because I, I 100% agree with you, and I can relate to that. Because people ask me, like, hey, Brian, is loans what you want to do for the rest of your life? Yeah. So I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> like, no. Why would I want to do this? I like it because I love solving problems, uh-huh. right? That's the my, interactions you, know, that's, you get. I love yeah, the interactions. Sure. But what I love to do is this right here. Mm-hmm. Connecting with someone else, knowing their stories, letting them, you know, connect with my stories and seeing where connecting we relate. With other and then being able to yeah. share that with people. But I can't do this in a bigger scale if I don't have, you know, a good enough money to put yeah, into if you this don't as have, well. If you don't have the foundation. Fortunately, man, the loans, you know, are you know pay really well. Um, you know, I'm not a millionaire. I'm not even like you know close to being rich. Mm-hmm. But I love this more. That than, chain has been you know, flashing in my eyes. Though. <laughs> you know, it's a gift, brother. My mom <laughs> gave me this. You know, but it. In a way, it's uh, it's my vehicle to get to where I want to be, yeah, to be able to, you know, touch definitely. more people, to be able to interact with more people and actually give them more, you know, stories from other people so that they're able to, you know, get off their feet. Because that's my biggest thing, bro. Just go out and do something, you know, bro. Yeah, and the way out, that you're yeah. going to go figure out what the fuck you want to do is by go out doing and doing it. shit that you don't want to fucking do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah, plain yeah. and simple, bro. Like, you got to try shit in order to figure out what you're good what you, at, and, what you're not good at, what you really what you don't like want to ever and, do, yeah, and what exactly. you're okay, you can do. That's my so biggest I could put thing, up bro. with this. Yeah, man. Get hobbies, for sure. Exactly, That's bro. What it you is. know what it Get is? Hobbies. And it's like, Make with friends. me, I, I'm Get so off the screens. Yeah. That's what it is. And that's okay. Except, okay, except okay. if you're watching this, you're Stand bringing on. another uh, another good fucking subject up. Stand These on. kids, bro. Like when I grew up, I was able to go outside and play, go oh, knock yeah, on doors too. of the kids around my neighborhood, bro. I don't see that no more. I mean, I never did that. I didn't really like the kids around my neighborhood. Okay, but but I did go out and I play. I with everybody on my hood, bro. <laughs> nah, nah. Shit. Um, but yeah, I feel that, man. My kid, my my kid. My nephew, bro, he's 12 years old. He's like your kid, I bet. And he's, <laughs> dude, I swear to God. Um, but he's always on his phone. And even if he's at the house, 
he's bored as hell. Mm. He he gets on his phone and I see him just kind of like, so I walk around anxious, like restless. like he's like he doesn't know what to do. I'm like yo like what's up, and he's like yeah. I'm like yo you're walking around like you're bored as hell. Right, you you right, want right. to do something? He's like I am. I'm like yo, like go play outside. Like we have two dogs. We got a freaking little play. No, thing yeah, little play. You guys still have that shit. Yeah, man. Oh, cool. God, like, he's like 12 years old, though. He's not going to play with these seventh grade. He's obviously not going to go out there. He's a cool kid now. Yeah, yeah, you know, she, I remember seventh grade. Fuck. That's such a long time ago. Was, or at least man. it feels like it. That's you know, and it's funny because like at the office here, I'm like, yeah, well, when I was younger, people look at me like, what the fuck are how young? Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, what, when years we were fucking 10? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So we're getting right <laughs> here to like, you know, the end of the show. Uh, and we're trying out this new thing. It's going to be uh, called rapid fire questions. All right. Oh, so I'm going to shoot some questions at you and you got to fucking answer them as fast as you can. All right. Skip, skip, skip. You ready? Quick draw. All right, bro. Uh, where would you go if you were invisible? Bank. Bank. Oh, shit. All right. Getting dough. All right. If you had superpowers, what would it be? Invisible. Okay, fine. <laughs> go, to, go to the bank. <laughs> Shit, bro. I'm just going to the bank. Fuck it. How many pull-ups can you do in a row? Shit, I haven't done it in a minute, but like 20, 21. Okay. Cake or pie? Pie. Shit. Easy. Cake's Rocky pie. or Southpaw? Rocky. <laughs> oh, are you talking about the movies? I thought you were talking about the <laughs> and shit. I'm like, what the like, like, what? Like, no. like, Rocky uh, or Southpaw? All right. Not Rocky, This bro. one, you got to gotta repeat after me, all right? Repeat after me. My name is Adrian. My name is Adrian. And I like to. And I like to do everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know I was supposed to finish it. That's why you, you threw me off. Uh, but I like to uh, draw. I like to draw a lot. Up and follow on cactus. No, I like to draw a lot. Really? Yeah. I haven't done it in a minute, but I like to draw. You know, I haven't drew anything, but if I really had to, like, I like to draw. But yeah, <laughs> I never done it, but I like to do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, giving presents or getting presents? Giving, giving presents. It's definitely huh? a cooler feeling. Hmm? I guess. Sure. Uh, I mean, getting is no, 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 no. It, it has it, it giving. Bro, it, I just yeah, like if you see if, if it's a good it, if it's a good present too. They're like, oh my gosh, like yo. The reward is. <laughs> like, and then you know, like, but they're what? they're gonna do something good for you later for sure. Oh shit! And if you get a good gift, so like, you're the bro, type like, that does something can... and like ask for something in return. No, but I just know, <laughs> I just know just that it's in their mind. Like, yo, this guy's a nice guy. And I slide them some fries or something. Oh, okay, shit, fries. And hopefully you get a burger back. Huh? Yeah, something like that. Um, what's something that you could eat for a week straight? Ooh, Chinese food. Chinese food? Yeah. I hate bro. Chinese. Where do you get your Chinese food at? Like Mandarin, Ooh, yeah. There's this little like Japanese. It's called Kyoto Sushi. It's over there. Um, oh, okay, okay. Like right off the 54. It's really oh, good. Okay, it's yeah, nice. yeah, a little shop. Mind. It's really good. Nice. Nice. I gotta yeah. check that place out. Yeah. Uh, are tomatoes fruit or vegetables? Vegetable. Really? Yeah. But okay, what about the whole thing be like that fruit have seeds and vegetables don't? Shit, I don't know. Now you got me. I'm have to Google it later. Okay, well get back to me on that one. I can grow it though. So yeah, that's what I figured. That I'm like, this fool's probably gonna know whether it's a fruit or not. <laughs> nah, like, I, don't know. I don't know. It's a hybrid. <laughs> so eat it. Uh, grow it. Eat it. Okay. Uh, share some vegetables. <sighs> guilty pleasures, bro. Guilty pleasures, like all right, ice cream for sure. Okay. You know, I'm not a big fan of ice cream oh, or dude. chocolate. Uh, uh, I just you I don't got know, me bro. both. I'm, I'm a sweet. Like I have like a sweet tooth. But okay. with chocolate, ice cream, um, was it man? popcorn, bro? I love popcorn. Crazy about that. Um, what is another guilty pleasure? Maybe uh, stand ups. I guess stand up comedies. I love okay. watching stand up comedies. Um, I don't know. What's a guilty pleasure Song. though? Something. I don't know, bro. What's your guilty pleasure song? Uh, what about song your song? Yeah, or artist. You know how, like, because my boy, I'm not going to say any names. I like Gucci, man. Eric like, Vega loves Takashi. Soldier Boy. 69. He's got, Soldier Boy's got a song, bro. Right. That's hey, bro, hold slaps. on. This is my thing about Soldier Boy. I respect with what he says, but I don't respect how he says it because he's right. He was low key like the nigga that started everything with the whole like going on YouTube and doing all his thing there. I mean, I guess I think he's crazy. I didn't. Really I mean, he jump is, into what he there's, saw. there's 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 truth in his madness. There's, there's 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 truth, bro. Here and there. All right. What do you say? I didn't. I didn't really. He just no. Said, fuck. Forget right. about that. Hey, never mind. Fuck. fuck no, so yeah, forget that's that, my boy, big yeah. big Drago, big Drago. <laughs> um. All right. Who is your celebrity crush? Oh, Selena Gomez. Oh, you fucking knew Easy, that one right yeah, off the bat, bro. Dude, You're I like, love fuck her. that. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, I fucking love her. It's cool. But when she does, she's like, I like I humanitarian like and all that stuff. Bro, if I see you liking one more of her I don't picture, follow. I don't follow around Good, Instagram. bro. Good. 
I can't do that to myself. I'm just torturing myself. All right. This is the last one. And uh, you have to repeat after me again, right? Okay. But for me, energy is basically all my fucking losses, right? All my lessons learned, everything that I've gone through life, all the people that I've lost, all the people that I've gained. Am I supposed to repeat that? No, no, no. Oh, I'll tell you after this. Fuck, nah, so I bundle that all up. And that's why you see me be full of energy because yeah. I've gone through so much shit okay. and you know, I'm still going to go through more, but what I've gone through right now has helped me become who I am and be where I'm going, you know, or that's, yeah. show me where I'm going right now. Right? So just saying that now this is what you got to repeat. I'm Adrian and I get my energy from I'm Adrian and I get my energy from my support system, oh. man. That's my family for sure. They give me my energy. Without my support system, I can't do what I do. Mm. You know, that's for sure. I mean, no one, everyone throws like that that term self-made around. Yeah. I really don't think anyone's self-made. You nah, you bro. have to have some you assistance if you want to really fucking do something. You need a team. You need some assistance. You need some support. So I get my energy from my support, man, for sure. Fuck yeah. yeah, fuck yeah, bro. They push me. They keep me going. They let me know that I can do it. And if I didn't have that, I probably wouldn't be doing. I wanted to quit. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. wanted to quit boxing. They told me, "Yo, keep doing your you're support system, in the gym." Yeah, man. So yeah, yeah, that's what it is Definitely. for sure. All right, man. Well, this basically wraps it up. Thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah, hell yeah, man. I appreciate I had a great time. the time, bro. It was super fun. Yeah. Uh, I know we were talking about it earlier, <laughs> during the weekend, and we're like, "Dude, this is gonna be cool." We're like, right? Yeah, it was though. It is, bro. So True. that being said, guys, thank packed. you guys for tuning in one more time. The only fee for this podcast is that you got to go tell one friend, you know? And you got to watch my fights. And exactly, that too. But you got to tell one friend, you know? Uh, if you have two friends, fuck, tell two, two of better. your friends. Three and friends? If, and, no, no, and if two friends is all you got, shit, tell all your friends. Honestly, you don't know whose <laughs> life you're going to be able to uh, impact <laughs> with the stories that we share. So with that being said, tune in, subscribe to the best podcast out there. Yep. Thank you guys for Energy. listening, and oh, we'll yeah. be back soon. Energy. That was fun. Uh, damn, bro. Woo. Thank you. That was, so fun. That was fun, dude. Yeah.